This video is about non-directional beacons. Uh, I have a file in this computer that was recorded by Roelof PA0RDT. You can see the file where it's located and the file name test PA0RDT.raw. Uh, I edit the file adfile.txt to make Linrad play this file and to save the parameters in the file or in files starting with the file name given as the second uh, item on this line. I have also made a file adwow.txt uh, and then that will use the file Perseus test pa 0 rdt Dot wow, and with the same set of parameters. Uh, I will convert the uh, original raw file to a WAV file that Perseus.exe can read uh, to be able to compare Linrad with Perseus. In order to do that, uh, the first step is I have to convert from raw to a WAV file that can be done with Linrad. Uh, here is a, a new installation of Linrad uh, and I have two icons because there is a 64-bit version. Uh, it's not very useful yet because I don't have 64-bit DLLs but it can be used for uh, input from uh, sound cards or network and output to sound card because they don't need any DLL files. But I'm using here only the 32-bit. So I click on it and since it's a new installation I have to set parameters and I say I'm just a normal user, that's S. Originally it was meaning setup. Font scale, I make that. Uh, let's say I make it no, I make it one and process priority normal and I specify the uh, screen size as percents so I say no and let's make it uh, 70 by 80% uh, is a fairly large fraction of the screen like this and I press W, I click on it and then press W to save settings up to this point. Then I want to convert the raw file to a WAV file that is number 5. And the file name I have to give the full path like this and then I press enter. Uh, and I wish to use 24-bit. I want everything to be unchanged. So I say yes. And then press enter. And press any key. So now we have one more file in the PA0RDT uh, directory go there. We have the .wav file, but uh, this cannot be played by Perseus because it doesn't contain a Perseus header. I have to bring up this command sim to Perseus and with this uh, file name as an argument. And this file is a part of the Linrad package. You can compile it under Linux. Enter the center frequency because there is no header. I have to tell it what the center frequency is and it is 400 kilohertz. And now conversion takes place. And 
if I look in the Windows Explorer, we have now Perseus test BA0 RDT uh, dot vav like that and this can be played with Leanrod as well as with Perseus I can now start Leanrod just by clicking the icon and there is no sound system set up neither input or output uh, but I do it the lazy way I press 1 to process the first file named in AD file and this is Windows so it looks for AD file dot txt as well so I press 1 and here I have to set up input and output so A and I select Z I don't worry about the sound card I'm just going to play recorded files but I do need an output so I say B and don't use port audio and the default output is 0 and that's it X don't forget to press W so I press W and now I can press 1 to play the recording and I have to select parameters I go for normal CW that's B repeat endlessly yes and I don't know anything about frequency corrections so I just feed a 0 into those and now uh, I will have to set parameters and I just press enter to adopt the defaults and here is the recording and the B's now in this recording the interesting stations that I will look at are on 327.6 kilohertz that is about here I have to switch off because I don't think microphone and radio will be heard well at the same time. Uh, 327.6 so I need to fine tune. I can tune the mouse wheel, look at the frequency scale was it F10? Uh, you have the scale here and I turn the mouse wheel oh it doesn't work when I have the visible mouse so I have to switch off with F10 and now I can turn and you can see uh, it moves very slowly if I depress the mouse here is a number O1 uh, and I use the depressed mouse wheel to turn it up to let's say 7 and then I use the non-depressed mouse to tune to 327.6 uh, like that and here we can see a weak signal here to hear it uh, I can reduce the bandwidth and now I will switch on the signal it says VJ not so easy to hear but I can expand the frequency scale by clicking here and now I can reduce the bandwidth 
that's the yellow line here. And now you can hear VJ. I hope I can hear it at least. And I can click in the waterfall on the frequency. It's here. So I click here to center the signal. And I can expand the baseband a little bit more, probably. But no more than this. The baseband storage time is too small. And I can reduce the bandwidth. And now it's quite clear in my headphones. Now Lindrad works as a quite conventional CW receiver with a fairly narrow filter. Uh, it's about 20 hertz wide, so it fits the uh, Kying speed reasonably well. I can do the same using Perseus 4.1a, so I click on that, and select wave file, file, and Perseus test PA0RDT, it should have the same content. Open. And I need the frequency uh, 327.6. The zoom doesn't work for me. I might have to make sure that the desired frequency is within the visible window. Now it's here. And zoom. But you can hear it's a similar signal and maybe a little bit louder. And we don't have the time resolution now uh, when the frequency resolution is very high. But the signal is here. And we have another signal up here. We'll come back to that later. Now, there is a better alternative. So I close that and go for the 
demo version of Perseus version 5. Frequency three hundred and twenty seven point six and CW mode. the frequency 327.6 kilohertz and here it is and now I can do a trick because this is a more recent Perseus version so I click on the span and we can see it here keying to make it waterfall rather than spectrum there has to be a button for that and I don't know where to find it yet waterfall is selected here and now I have set speed and contrast and brightness in a way that I like and you can see V J very clearly in the waterfall here and of course when the file restarts you get incorrect information but now it comes correct again So this is Perseus doing the same thing as I just showed in Linrad, but this is the modern Perseus with a better waterfall than the old one. But the audio is the same. Bandwidth is 30 Hz, it should be a little bit narrower. Like this perhaps. And it's now comfortable copy, I think. And we have also CL very close, but now it's outside the filter. Or partly outside the filter. I will now run Linrad again <coughs> and this time I will not use the original .raw file I will use the one that I was also using in Perseus just to make sure that if there is any difference I don't give Linrad any favor and this time I used number 4 so you can see that the file I select really is the one that I had in Perseus and line is 0 
and uh, since this is a wave file it doesn't contain all the information that was contained in the raw file so I have to give additional information so here I put B and repeat endlessly yes uh, I, I interpret it as I and Q and I don't invert the frequency scale that's no and zero and zero I have to give a little bit more information here than I had to do on the raw file and then I'm prompted to the parameter selection screens uh, because the file is missing that's not really true uh, because I have the file but the message is incorrect I just press enter now to keep the parameters we already set up that happen to be the default parameters and here we are 327.6 it's about here I can use the wheel mouse or I can just click in the waterfall the mouse is here and I click on the mouse and I want 327.6 that's here so I click at that point And we are back. And if I want now to show uh, on the waterfall in the bass band, I can first make the waterfall bigger. And I won't, don't want any averaging, so I put one here. to see something so I change the color scale and here we can see the signal maybe minus 5 but the time resolution is absolutely not what we want if we want to decode from the waterfall so I have to reduce the size of the FFT expand the scale that's by pressing here and now you can see the filter is very few pixels uh, on the spectrum I make it Now, uh, when having only one pixel, uh, it's not reasonable to use uh, uh, decimation in the frequency domain. I have to do it in the time domain. That means I have to click uh, this box here. Because when I do the back transformation having only one pixel, it means each block of data will have a constant amplitude and phase. And you could hear some ticking sound, it didn't sound nice. Uh, so uh, the box here. Uh, if the number of points of the filter is small, this should show two. Otherwise, it may be good to show one. For very large filters, number two is going to be too CPU inefficient. But here it's efficient and no problem. But you cannot copy from
from the waterfall, VJ, reasonably well. Uh, the time resolution is not good enough. I have to make the uh, waterfall speed even faster, so I click here. another window uh, maybe number 9 is going to be a little bit better for this purpose and 327.6 set the window to uh, sign to power 4. That gives the maximum permitted FFT size 65536 and the bandwidth uh, 21 Hertz. Then I press enter and enter and I make the first mixer bandwidth reduction not 6 but let's say 10. It means 2 to power 10. That is 
1024 from 500 kilohertz which means 500 hertz which is a very narrow bandwidth uh, and the third FFT window I don't want 9 anymore I make it 8 because I want a nice filter now uh, baseband storage time I make that long let's say 100 seconds and I forgot something X P I have to set a large FFT one storage time it's one second I make it uh, 30 seconds and now I see a small fraction of the frequency spectrum and what I want is something different from this so I click on the frequency scale up here and then feed in the desired frequency limits here uh, point uh, click sorry click point three two up to let's say point three four and then click apply below here and the frequency you are interested in is three hundred and twenty seven dot six here And in the baseband, I click on the signal. Here is the VJ. And set a matched filter that fits to the keying sidebands of this signal. Uh, 
AW receiver uh, with a narrow filter and all the SDR software should provide the same result more or less easily depending on whether one can set the narrow filter and control the frequency well enough and so on but there is no fancy processing yet Lindrad has an S meter I increased the size of it switch off the AGC this is what we want it to sound like Now I 
go back to the signal of interest at 327.6 here something has a trick called coherent detection. It's synchronous AM. It means that uh, there are two filters. The outer one, which is uh, tuned to fit the bandwidth of the signal at something like 14 hertz bandwidth or so. And then there is an inner filter here with a bandwidth that is three times narrower. If I click on the coherent detect thing here, one, two, three, uh, I only send the signal that is in phase with the carrier that is extracted from the inner filter. So the carrier is considered to be whatever comes through this filter and that is used as a phase reference for the signal. Now uh, the phase reference filter is wide, it's just three times narrower, means uh, it doesn't even last for the length of a Morse code dash. It has to be a little bit larger, let's say 10. bigger than that, let's say 50. And I move the coherency graph here, because that's where I want to look for the performance. Here you can see uh, the phase angle of the stronger signals. And it's well around zero, or reasonably well. I can try to make the inner filter even narrower, and that's by uh, expanding the uh, spectrum, the FFT size. Maybe like this. And I have to make sure that the carrier is in the center of the filter. Now, this doesn't look quite good anymore. You can see that the phase angle goes from here to here. It's a fairly large spread. So I make the ratio a little bit less, let's say 30. Or even 20. And now the theory tells me this should be a little bit easier to copy. The difference is small. To demonstrate it, I go to coherency mode 2. Here. And then I press W. And make a file. Let's say COH2. And then I will wait for a while. 
Minrod is now writing a stereo audio file because I assume that as listeners to this video you don't listen with stereo headphones so you cannot hear that the signal is only present in one ear or almost only present in one ear but that will be clear from the uh, playing of the audio file and one can listen to the in phase or to the out of phase signal and see that the signal to noise ratio is better in one case and not quite as good in the other uh, and I didn't monitor the time I leave it running for a while because I edit the video afterwards and now I switch off the coherent detection and run ordinary uh, CW and then one can compare analyzing the this section to the previous section and look at the signal to noise ratio by how much it differs file goes into Linrad data. I called it COH2, so it becomes COH2.1. And I add a line in advav.txt uh, to play this file and put parameters in the directory PA0RTD. That's not right. RDT. and save and start Linrad again and then uh, select from ADVAV that's 4 and now I select file number 1 and normal CW and repeat yes and it's a stereo recording and I do not want to interpret it as I and Q I want to interpret it as a two channel signal so that is no and frequency errors are unknown and uninteresting in this case and then press and then save and here we are This is a narrowband signal. I don't want to process it any further. But I don't want to see it. So I click the arrow boxes and having to turn on the mouse to demonstrate it. So it's this box and it's this one. Here is the signal. And we cannot see it well because the FFT resolution is very wide compared to uh, this signal. That's because of the parameters I was setting. X, P, uh, let's make the bandwidth 5 hertz and no averaging and here we can see the spectrum of the signal and uh, 
I'm clicking in the boxes a little bit. So I click on the signal here. And select the wide filter. And remove the AGC. I don't want to change the signal at all. I just want to play it as it comes from the wave file. And I want to look at it in the S meter graph. So I make the S meter graph bigger and change it to the DBM scale because I want to establish the noise floor. And I want fixed polarization for the in phase component in phase component. Run the S meter graph slower. Oops. Maybe like this. This is a little bit too slow. And I want to show RMS only. And now I'm so far into the file that we are listening to the conventional detector. So I press X and B and click on the signal again. distinguish the signal level which you will have here from the noise level which is harder to f establish the noise should be the same in I and Q when there is no signal and it's about minus 8 on the scale Expand the scale a little bit. To see better. And to establish the noise floor, I run the spectrum much slower. comes the noise. And from here I can establish the noise floor to be roughly where I hold the mouse here. So 
here we have the signal from the normal CW detection. And the level is... But 
at this fairly large signal-to-noise ratios. Uh, I'll switch off that. At these fairly large signal-to-noise ratios, uh, 6 decibels doesn't really mean so much. Because we are above the detect threshold. The non-directional beacons are typically A2, means a carrier and a tone keying. So the carrier is on all the time and the tone goes on and off. The tone is 400 Hz. Uh, so I'm now tuned to the carrier of VJ and I opened the filter bandwidth to uh, uh, about 1 kHz. And uh, here I can apply uh, coherent detection. I've changed some parameters a little bit but there's no magic in that and I switch on the loudspeaker. It's possible to hear VJ, but it's weak. And you might hear CL as well, but it's even a little bit weaker. But now we have both sidebands involved, and I expand the baseband by clicking the baseband expand. which is here this one and here we can see there are a couple of carriers around 328 So I will tune to this, the first one, by clicking on the carrier here. And then uh, I set the ratio very high here, uh, 4000. get a narrow filter and it seems I clicked twice so I have to click once again on the signal I don't know why the recording software the uh, I don't remember what it was called this S recorder. It doesn't see the mouse when I'm within Linrod, which is silly. So I have to press F10, but then Linrod does not see the mouse instead. And it was not accurate enough, so I expand. Because I want the signal really centered. when doing coherent detection. But it's clear from the spectrum that what is within the narrow filter is very much dominated by this carrier, which is nearly 40 dB above the noise floor. So this phase that is extracted is very accurate. And I make a recording of this by pressing W. Enter the file name as the frequency. 3280017. And now the W is blinking, so I have a recording running. 
And I can see the frequency is a little bit too low. So this is better. Stop recording, that's W. Click on the next carrier, which is here. Left side, here. To move that carrier to the center. And I don't hear much difference when listening on the stereo headphones. But there should be a difference when I play the wave files that arise from recording this. So I press W. Give the file name three two eight O O two two. And allow it to run for some time. There is a carrier at three two eight O O six nine. I make a recording from that in coherent two mode. Yeah, yeah. 
and CL and whatever this is. And I will make a recording of this frequency as well. So I click on it to tune Lindra to that frequency. W. I, I got a little bit of this into the recording where I didn't want it, but that was quite a short time. Now we have the uh, about 10 dB weaker signal in the uh, narrow filter for extracting the carrier phase. So I press W again and give the file name as 328-0082 and allow this to be running for a while. to extract what this could be uh, from the coherent processing of the resulting file. We will see. So, I stop here and come back with processing of these audio files. I will now play the audio output from uh, coherent detection on the AM modulation of the NDBs uh, in Linrad. Uh, and I play them as uh, two channel, two RF channels. Uh, the files are here for. Uh, and I look at the first one, number three. And the signal starts at zero and goes up to uh, about 450 hertz because the bandwidth was about 900 hertz. Uh, the signals are at about 400 hertz from the start, that is 388.4 according to the scale up here, and I click on the middle of all the signals we have. And it's clear, I can hear VJ. Uh, I make the spectrum show a little bit more. We have several signals here, 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 and here. Note that this one is present only in the green track. That's because this is the one uh, on which the coherent detect was locked to the carrier. So I click on that frequency to move it to the center and things go slowly at these narrow bandwidths uh, we can look at the signal to noise ratio I run the S meter graph slower by clicking here that, for example. Uh, this box shows M, means RMS power. And you can see that the red is all the time at this line, which is about 
five. And the blue is up here when the keying goes on, but down at the same level as the red when there is no keying. So the scale is wrong by 5 dB. So I enter, uh, I forgot, and was it minus or plus? Minus 12. Now the noise floor is on the 0 dB line and cal computed with fairly long averaging time, that's why the curve is reasonably smooth. Now I run the S meter faster. then I can read the signal level on the S meter graph. Here we are. That was just when it made a new start, so I have to wait. Here we have VJ. Uh, signal to noise level is I would say 14 dB, maybe 15. It varies a little bit with time. I will look a little bit more. Mm, 14, perhaps. 15. Now, there is one more trick one can do, and that is to run coherent detect on this signal on the in-phase signal here so I click on the coherent box like this and then I press W to save this and give it a file name vj slash coh slash coh And it will take some time to make a long enough recording to make it easy to evaluate uh, what the result will be from this. There should be a further improvement of the signal-to-noise ratio. the next file so that is 4 and uh, 4 and I use the same parameters and I click at the same place 400 and wait for some time because we are doing big transform and they take some time And here you can see VJ, but it 
comes in both channels and it varies between the channels and it comes with equal with equal strength in uh, green and red tracks but here is a signal which is only uh, in the in phase channel so I click on this frequency
will be enough. So I press W, X, X, and 4. Then I go for the next file, which is number 5. And again I click around 400. And have some patience. Now the signal that comes in the in-phase channel is here, here, so I click here to move that signal into the passband center. VLK And I check the noise floor change the scale. It seems that uh, one of the files was done a little bit earlier with some small difference in settings somewhere. But now the noise floor is on zero. I want to establish the signal level. Seems to be, let's say, uh, 12 dB, maybe 13. Look some more times. I can't call this 12 dB. And then I record this uh, with a coherent detection. So I click this box and press W. VLK. And wait for a while. I don't have a very suitable scale on the waterfall, I changed that. And I don't see much better for that.
we have three reasonably strong signals. But I did record for four carriers, so now I will look at the last one. Stop recording and X and X. And now I tried the 10 decibels weaker signal, number 6. And again click in the interesting frequency range here. And the signal is expected to be 10 dB weaker, so it's questionable whether it can be seen or not. And of course, the signals we have looked at before, they are now equally strong in the red and in the green color in the baseband. First one is number seven. And I have to give parameters how I want to listen to it. And B, yes, interpret this I and Q, no. And the default parameters to start with. Uh, not quite, I will uh, mode C, not automatic. And save. And here is the signal. a little bit. 
bit slower. Like this. And and the noise looks to be about... Uh, what could this be? 9 dB or something. X B. So put nine in the calibration window. And look at the normal speed S meter. signal is now up here somewhere it is 18 decibels about and it was 14 decibels previously and you can hear this is a solid copy easy to hear This was incorrect because that is where the repeat, the recording repeated, and here it stops. So I go for the next one. Oops. X, X. That is number eight. check the noise floor seems I did not change anything so The signal to noise ratio is about 15 dB and comfortable copy. Last one. Nine. Zero point looks right. And well, sixteen DB perhaps. Or fifteen. And it was twelve before, so the gain by adding this coherent 
process seems to be 3 dB. I've done it twice, so this is 6 decibels enhancement of these fairly weak, but not really too weak signals for normal listening. I am now running the original .raw file in Linrad. Uh, I can here uh, degrade the noise floor by adding random noise. I do that by pressing F7. After having clicked on the screen to get focus. 10, 11, 12 bits, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now I can see a degradation. 17 bits. 18. reasonable. I check the noise floor here. Minus 0.1 dB. And here uh, plus 9 dB. So it's 9.2 decibels that I have degraded the noise floor by. I press S and give a file name and save this. Here is the original file again played with Perseus. You can see uh, Perseus test PA0 RDT dot, dot above. And now I change to the file which has 9 decibels more noise. It's Perseus add noise dot above. Open. And I have to set the frequency. You can see on the S meter here, it shows somewhat more. And on the selected frequency here, I see nothing. And I don't hear anything either. Maybe by averaging several repetitions of the waterfall, one could extract these signals. Now I am recording uh, the signal at 0016 or maybe 0017, that's VJ. The carrier is still uh, strong above the noise floor. Trying to get the mouse visible, I don't know why. Here it is. So it's at 40 dB while the noise is at 10. So uh, coherent detection would run fine even at 15 decibels lower signal levels than this. And that's encouraging. And I've saved a little bit more than a minute, so I press W. I have to get the focus to Linrod and W. And then uh, X. So you can see I'm running Perseus addnoise.vav, the same that I was using in Perseus.x. Now I will run the output from the coherent detect of on the carrier at 328.0016, and that is number 5, that is with 9.2 dB of added noise. Here we are. I could see there is something present here. It's clearly weaker than before. And I click on 
And I can see very clearly here is a signal which comes only in the green points. So that's the output in phase with the carrier. This is the signal I want. So I click on it. And I could hear VJ actually. Not so clear, but I But I clicked twice, so I click on the proper frequency. Because I want it at the center, so I can run coherent processing on this signal. Because it is now pretty weak. I can hear that it is VJ, mostly because I know it is VJ. But you can see on the S meter, V, uh, hmm. So it is not quite clear. It looks that I didn't center very accurately. Now, since I run in uh, uh, the time domain filtering, it isn't necessary to have the signal absolutely centered, but I try to move it a little bit closer anyway. Like that. And then I go for coherent detect on this signal. A little bit stronger. And maybe it's a little bit easier now. And I save this. Uh, that is W. And I give it just X as the file name. And now I play uh, x dot wow, that is number twelve. And we have it here. And I can hear that. easy to copy, but if you listen for a while, here is a clear VJ, and VJ again. Averaging this a couple of times would give a very good copy. If I run it slow to get an idea about the noise floor, so the 
noise seems to be close to well minus two or something. signal it goes up to maybe 10 dB so it signals to noise ratio is maybe 12 decibels and 12 decibels uh, within a filter that is matched to the signal bandwidth is about the limit we have on the reception of CW. To go to weaker signal than this, it will be necessary to use averaging of the repetitive pat pattern.